Hello students, a few days back I took a class on diabetes mellitus, alright? And you know while diagnosing diabetes mellitus, the most important parameter is blood glucose and another parameter is HbA1c. Now when I asked my students what is the full form of HbA1c, what do you mean by HbA1c, there were mixed answers and by mixed answers I mean few students answered glycated hemoglobin and few students answered glycosylated hemoglobin. Now I asked them where did you hear these terms and they read it from books, they read it from the internet, they read it from various articles but there is a problem, right? Both are not the same. So HbA1c actually means glycated hemoglobin but often it is termed as glycosylated hemoglobin in older textbooks and by many students as well. So in this video I have decided to fundamentally clear the concept about the difference between glycation and glycosylation. Glycosylation is a very important event that is properly regulated and controlled in the body at the genetic level, alright? It is actually a post translational modification, you know? When a protein is synthesized is known as translation. After the protein is synthesized in order to attain its full function, it may be role in protein folding, it may be role in signaling or it may be role in any other function, maybe enzyme activity. A saccharide residue, a carbohydrate residue is enzymatically added to it, okay? So this is a post translational modification where a carbohydrate residue is enzymatically added to a protein in order to enhance its function. Glycosylation improves the function of protein, enhances the enzyme activity, alright? However, glycation is different. Glycation is non-enzymatic, alright? It's a phenomena that happens in blood by itself. It's not regulated. What do I mean by itself? A disease process in which already blood glucose level is high or whatever the blood glucose level is, the interaction between the protein and the glucose amidst the disease process or in normal physiological process, the attachment of carbohydrate residue is via covalent bonding and it is non-enzymatic. I can give you real world example, if you heat a piece of chicken and sugar on a frying pan, alright, after some time it will caramelize and it will turn brown, alright, that's how chicken tandoori is cooked. That is glycation, the carbohydrate residue, the saccharides of sugars are attached covalently, non-enzymatically, right. Similarly, ripening, browning of overripe banana, all these are example of glycation. In body, the same thing happens. It happens in blood all by itself. Hemoglobin gets non-enzymatically modified, right, by the amount of glucose that is present in blood and that is known as glycation and that results in production of HbA1c. One of the key differences in glycosylation and glycation is glycosylation is actually important. It enhances the protein function as I already told you. But glycation almost always disrupts the protein function. It causes damage. There is a panel of disease that is produced by formation of what we know as advanced glycation end products or AGEs. All right? So, if you are undergraduate student, just know this and if you are postgraduate student, you should give it a read. But all in all, the gist is glycosylation is enzymatically controlled. It occurs at the post-translational modification level, at genetic level and it is properly regulated. It enhances protein function. But glycation happens all by itself. It is the phenomena by, of covalent attachment of saccharide residues in a non-enzymatic method to the protein. It is not regulated and it almost always results in disruption or hampering in function of protein. So if the term HbA1c is asked from now, you should never say glycosylated hemoglobin, it is glycated hemoglobin. Yes, older textbooks actually meant the both one and the same, but just know this, we always refer to the enzymatic modification as glycosylation and non-enzymatic as glycation. So I hope I was able to clearly explain in this video. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. It will support this channel. It will help the video to reach many more readers 
who are finding difficulty to understand this very topic. And I will see you next week with another video. Till then, bye and take care.